Hi, Griffin. Are you ready for book club? Hi, guys. Welcome to Reading with Ray. Griffin, I think, is a better host than Ray most of the time because he sits right here beside me. Oh, he's my good boy. All right, are we ready to read? Oh, yeah, we're going to read more about the pig. Yeah. yeah, you like treats as much as the pig does. Absolutely. All right, well. I'm here, I'm Renee, I'm the Children's Librarian at Salem Public Library in Salem, Ohio. Well, I'll go this way. You can see how enthusiastic Daisy Ray is today. She's just tired and ready for a nap. I'm gonna read your books. All right. Now, I chose Mercy Watson for this week, thinking it would take us the whole week, and it actually was, I guess, shorter than I had thought. Um, which is, is okay. Uh, so it just gives us opportunity to get through even more books. Uh, I've got so many things I would love to share with you guys. So um, really, I guess that's not really a complaint about it. It just went faster than I expected. So we're going to finish that one today. And I don't want to start on a new uh, chapter book today because if you don't watch this one, yeah, it's, it would just get too confusing. So I'm not going to start the new one today, even though this one's too short. So I've got, actually got another, um, a picture book that I can just do in one thing that I'm going to share with you. It's one of my favorites. So, um, I am going to tell you that we are going to start tomorrow on Stink, the Incredible Shrinking Kid by Megan McDonald. This one is available on Hoopla as well. Everything we're doing, we're trying to do stuff that's available on Hoopla so that you can read along, read along with me. Um, so go, you know, go, go ahead and get ready, get and get it downloaded. Um, so yeah, Stink by Megan McDonald, illustrations by Peter H. Reynolds. So I think we're gonna have a lot of fun with this one and we're going to start it tomorrow. I just want to let you know what book we were doing next so that you could go ahead and get it downloaded. If you are reading along with us, uh, we will finish up with Mercy Watson here. Um, what else are you guys reading? I would love to know what you're reading during this time off. Uh, hopefully you guys are keeping up with your schoolwork at least a little bit, I hope. Um, and watching book club and reading and getting fresh air and all the other things that we can, can do right now, helping your grownups at home because everybody's a little stressed out right now and we could all use a little bit of help. So help your grown-ups ask for help if you need it those are all good important things to do uh get outside and draw with chalk and it's a little early to plant flowers i guess you can plant pansies um but you know get your garden ready anything that you you know just anything to keep us busy and active right now um i am crocheting and playing ukulele and doing some of my die cut crafting so and doing my book clubs as well as trying to get the summer reading program put together for you guys. Right now we are still so up in the air about what summer reading is going to look like, but I am working with several different variables and different situations to try to bring you guys a great summer reading program, no matter what happens with whether the library is open or not. We don't know any of that yet, um, and we will let you know as soon as we do. But rest assured, we're definitely going to do our best to continue to bring you programming at least through a digital format um, as much as we possibly can during this crisis. Um, so, you know, stay tuned. We've got more information coming to you really soon. Don't forget we do story times. We also have the Rogues Reads, which is our older kids book club for fourth to eighth grade. All ages are welcome to do any of the book clubs or story times. They're just kind of geared specifically towards those ones. And I have been chatting a lot here. <laughs> uh, see, my dogs have not moved. Daisy Ray is very tired now. Apparently that the adventure of eating cat food wore her out too much. She's not supposed to go in the basement where the cat food is, but she sneaks down there. Um, so... I guess we will finish up Mercy Watson. Um, I would love to know how you guys are doing. Send me a picture, send me a video, send me a note. Uh, I miss you guys so much. I miss seeing all of your beautiful faces in the library. And I do hope I can see all of you soon. But in the meantime, I would love to hear from you. Um, I know 
Isabella sent me a message the other day, or her mom did. So I think she's at least li watching, listening. Hi, Isabella. Hi, Charlotte. Hi, Fran. <laughs> and Jeremy. <laughs> um, so And all your dogs. So I definitely miss everybody, and I can't wait to see everybody again. But for right now, let's find out what Mercy's up to. Um, if you remember, Mercy and her parents were all sleeping, having wonderful dreams, and the bed started to fall through the floor. Mercy jumped off the bed. They thought she was going for help. She's actually looking for a snack. But she got the neighbors to call the fire department and the firefighters saved Mercy, or saved uh, Mr. and Mrs. Watson from falling through the floor. And we ended yesterday, um, I'm just gonna reread this one so we can refresh. From outside the Watson's house came a squeal. Gotcha, shouted Eugenia. Chapter 10. Ned and Lorenzo and Mr. and Mrs. Watson all went outside. Eugenia was sitting on the ground. Her arms were wrapped around Mercy's neck. Her cheek was resting on Mercy's back. Eugenia was breathing very loudly. It looks to me like she's asleep. And Mercy's smiling. She thinks it's still funny. This pig, she said, was on my property. We prefer that you did not call her a pig, said Mrs. Watson. We would prefer that you call her a porcine wonder, said Mr. Watson. After all, she did save us. She's a hero. She's a pig, said Eugenia. And she started to cry. There's your sister, said Baby. She bent over and patted Eugenia on the back. Poor Eugenia, she's having a rough night. There was a pig outside and it scared Baby and then she had to chase the pig all around. Mercy yawned. Oh, she was very tired. Kind of like our my co-host here. She's very tired as well. I guess that's it, said Ned. Yep, said Lorenzo, our work here is done. Wait, said Mrs. Watson. It's almost time for breakfast. Oink, asked Mercy. That's right, breakfast, said Mrs. Watson. And she kissed the top of Mercy's head. She looked up at the fireman. Do you boys like toast? Who doesn't like toast? What's your favorite thing to put on toast? Chapter 11. In the Watson's house, around the Watson's kitchen table, sat Eugenia Lincoln and Baby Lincoln and Mr. Watson and Mrs. Watson and Ned and Lorenzo. And Mercy, of course. She was at the head of the table, in the seat of honor, and in front of her, on her favorite blue plate, was a very tall stack of hot buttered toast. Look at that stack she's got! It's a lot of toast. A toast to Mercy, said Mr. Watson, holding up his glass of orange juice. A toast to our darling, our dear, said Mrs. Watson. A toast to Mercy, said Baby. Oh, look, everybody's gathered around, toasting Mercy for sharing and saving them. And Oh, but Eugenia still doesn't look very happy, does she? But she's sitting next to Mercy, so I guess that's something. Oh, and she doesn't even have any toast on her plate. Hmm, like she's kind of crabby. Yikes. In my opinion, said Eugenia, pigs should not be toasted. In my opinion, pigs do not belong at the kitchen table. To our hero, said Mr. Watson, where would we be without mercy? Yes, said Mrs. Watson, who would have saved us? I can't imagine, said Ned. Me neither, said Lorenzo, and they all clinked glasses. And Mercy had another piece of toast. Chapter 12. Outside the Watson's house, the sun was rising. First, the sun was red, and then it was orange, and then it rose higher and higher. And inside the Watson's house, Mercy was lying on the couch. She was getting ready to take a nap. Sounds like a good plan. Oh my gosh, she looks just like Daisy Ray. Daisy Ray, are you just trying to be Mercy? Yeah. <clears throat> Bright, bright is the morning sun, sang Mr. and Mrs. Watson together. But brighter still is our poor sign wonder. Mercy smiled. 
She closed her eyes and she was asleep before Mr. and Mrs. Watson even finished the song. And that's the end. All right, the back page says, join Marcy Watson in all six of her pigtails. Uh, there are six books in this series. The next one is Mercy Watson Goes for a Ride, also available on Hoopla. I think all of them are there. So if you enjoy this book, absolutely go get the rest of them and read them. They're fantastically funny. Um, I love Mercy. I, Mercy's my favorite. So Mercy Watson to the rescue and she saved her grownups. Even though they still have a giant hole in their floor and their bed came through. That's probably not good. But she saved them, so that part was good. Okay, I'm gonna drink a water here. Doing this much reading dries me out. Okay. I said I was gonna read, just you know, to add a little bit more to our reading today. I've got a, a single picture book that I want to share with you. Uh, this one. It's available as an audiobook or as a video on Hoopla. It's not available as a um, ebook to read. So I apologize. It's just I happen to have this one here at my house and I really like it. So I wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, this is Goldilocks and the Three Dinosaurs by Mo Willems. Um, let's say if you, you spend much time with me, you know I love Mo Willems. Mo Willems is the uh, creator of the Pigeon books uh, and. Uh, Elephant Piggy. So if you know those books, you you know Mo Willems. You know he's fantastic. Um, right now he's doing his lunchtime doodles with Mo, so you can learn to doodle with him and uh, just get to know what a cool guy he is. Mo was one of the first uh, authors and illustrators who encouraged us librarians and teachers to share his works. So for that, we're very grateful. So big thanks to Mo Willems and HarperCollins Publishing for letting us share this book this way. Uh, let's see, you guys can see. Then you, you guys know the story of Goldilocks, right? And the, the three bears? You know, baby bear, mama bear, papa bear, too hot, too cold, just right. Yeah. So this is Goldilocks and the three dinosaurs. Mix it up just a little bit. Once upon a time, there were three dinosaurs. Papa Dinosaur, Mama Dinosaur, and some other dinosaur who happened to be visiting from Norway. Oh, he's just a visitor. One day, for no particular reason, the three dinosaurs made up their beds, positioned their chairs just so, and cooked three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding at varying temperatures. Yum! I want some chocolate pudding. Now, if I wanted some of the dinosaur's chocolate pudding... What should I do? For, I mean, I, I should just go take it, right? I could like maybe knock on their door and say, hi, dinosaurs. Could I have some pudding, please? And if they're nice, they might say yes. They might say no, which we should ask. Oh, boy, said Papa Dinosaur in his loud, booming voice. It is finally time to leave and go to the, uh, someplace else. <laughs> Yes, continued Mama Dinosaur. I sure hope no innocent little succulent child happens to be by our unlocked home while we are, uh, someplace else. <laughs> then the other dinosaur made a loud noise that sounded like a big evil laugh, but was probably just a polite Norwegian expression. The three dinosaurs went someplace else. And we're definitely not hiding in the woods waiting for an unsuspecting kid to come by. Uh-oh. I think the chocolate pudding might have been a trap. Sure enough, five minutes later, a poorly supervised little girl named Goldilocks came traipsing along. There she is. Just then the force boomed with what could have been a dinosaur yelling, Gotcha! But I'm pretty sure it was just the wind. The loud noise was immediately followed by another loud noise that was sounded kind of like, be patient, Papa Dinosaur, the trap is not yet sprung. But that could have been a rock falling or, or a squirrel. Either way, Goldilocks was not the type of little girl who listened to anyone or anything. 
For example, Goldilocks never listened to warnings about the dangers of barging into strange, enormous houses. You shouldn't just go barging into people's houses. So as soon as Goldilocks came across a strange, enormous house, she barged right in. Didn't even knock. That's rude. Inside, Goldilocks immediately smelled the three bowls of delicious chocolate pudding. Mmm, said Goldilocks. That chocolate pudding smells delicious. If only I could get all the way up to the top of that counter. And then Goldilocks noticed a very tall ladder that just happened to be there. And it certainly wasn't left there on purpose. Goldilocks climbed up the ladder and found herself face to face with three gigantic bowls of chocolate pudding. This couldn't possibly be a trap, could it? The first bowl of chocolate pudding was too hot, but Goldilocks ate it all anyway because, hey, it's chocolate pudding, right? The second bowl of chocolate pudding was too cold, but who cares about temperature when you've got a big bowl of chocolate pudding? Not her. She got her whole head down in the bowl. And the third bowl of pudding was just right, but Goldilocks was in such a roll by now, she hardly noticed. It's like swimming in the bowl of chocolate pudding. It's barged into their house and ate their pudding without asking? Yikes. Soon, Goldilocks was stuffed like one of those delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons, which, by the way, are totally not the favorite things in the whole world for hungry dinosaurs. Tired and groggy, Goldilocks noticed three chairs in the living room. So, she climbed down the ladder and walked out of the kitchen. The first chair was too tall. The second chair was too tall. I mean, these are, these are dinosaur chairs. But the third chair was too tall. Goldilocks wasn't going to climb that high just to sit in some chair. So she hiked over to the bedroom. And when she got there, Goldilocks noticed that the beds were also gigantically big. What is going on around here? Groaned the exhausted girl. The bears that live here must be nuts. But do bears live here? No. Just then, the room filled with a loud, booming noise that was either a passing truck or a dinosaur gloating. <laughs> a few more minutes and she'll be asleep. Delicious chocolate-filled little girl bonbons are yummier when they're rested. Even a little girl who never listens to anyone or anything had to hear that. Okay, yikes. Goldilocks took a moment to stop and think, which was longer than she was used to stopping and thinking. Even the sign appears as home sweet dinosaur home. Hey, she told herself, this isn't some bear's house. This is some dinosaur's house. Say what you like about Goldilocks, but she was no fool. As quickly as she could, she ran to the back door and got out of there. It's probably a smart thing to do. Just then a loud plane flew by, which sounded pretty much like a trio of dinosaurs yelling, Now! Or Charge! Or the Norwegian expression for Chewy Bon Bon Time! Ooh. Suddenly and completely coincidentally, the three dinosaurs rushed through the front door. But they were too late. Goldilocks was gone, and all that was left in the house were three <sighs> disappointed dinosaurs. Oh man, they didn't get to eat the little girl. The end. And the moral of the story is, if you ever find yourself in the wrong story, leave. Oh, uh, that's what she was looking for. She was looking for the bears, not the dinosaurs, because the dinosaurs wanted to eat her. And the moral for the dinosaurs is lock the back door. Because lock the door, she couldn't have gotten out. <laughs> That's the end. All right. I like that one because it's pretty silly and they're actually like setting a trap for and I think that's fun. So, uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to, you know, extend our reading time by adding that one in there today. And like, so tomorrow we're going to start with Stink and Stink the Incredible Shrew. What is it? The Incredible Shrinking Kid. This is book one in the Stink series. There are a ton of these books. So if you like this one, we've got plenty to read. And I think they're all available on Hoopla as well. 
So if you like it, and I don't, I don't know if we're going to continue this one. We'll see. Um, but say so we actually ran a little bit longer today, which is good. So I'm going to sign off. Say, see how well Daisy Ray stuck with me today. Griffin is still sleeping by my side. Dogs are good friends. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> so moral of the story. Uh, yeah, if you're in the wrong story, leave. Lock the back door to, um, don't just go barging in people's houses and eating their chocolate pudding. They might not like that. And it might be a trap. So that's all for today. And I will see you guys tomorrow. Thanks. Bye.